Okay, so we are solidly making our way through the third section of our class, which is basic cost estimating. Our next lecture is on calculating ink coverage and then putting a cost to that ink coverage. Our learning goals for this lecture are to define what ink coverage is, two, to understand how ink coverage is calculated, and then more importantly, number three and four, Number three, estimate the quantity of ink required for a printing job. What's really important about number three is that you have to calculate it for every color of ink that you're printing with. So most of the times we print with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the printing process colors. So every time you do a problem, you actually have four problems to do. You have to calculate the cyan ink coverage, the magenta ink coverage, the yellow ink coverage, and the black ink coverage to get the total amount of ink needed. And last but not least, after we've done that section, we are going to put a price to the quantities that we estimate. So if we estimate 100 pounds of ink, we'll say, well, how much does 100 pounds of ink cost? So the first thing you have to understand is what is ink coverage. In order to be able to calculate exactly how much ink is needed, you have to understand the concept of ink coverage. Ink coverage is the amount of paper that is covered in ink. Each color that we print with will have its own ink coverage percentage. We can see by just looking at the two examples below that the one on the left has a lot of cyan in it, whereas the one on the right has a lot of yellow in it. Just by looking at it, I can tell it's going to be really saturated. I would guess the one on the left is a lot of blue or cyan ink and a lot of black ink. If we were purchasing ink to print these images, we could guesstimate that we need to purchase a lot of yellow for the one on the right and a lot of cyan for the one on the left. Here's a breakdown of what the printing plates, for example, one would look like. Note that uh, when we print something, we have to use a printing plate, and each printing plate can only have one color on it. So we usually make any color we want out of the entire rainbow using four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So in order to recreate this image on the left-hand side here, which was our first example from the last slide, we have to apply this much cyan, this much magenta, this much yellow, and this much black. Now the top row, it all looks black, but what it indicates is a positive area or a negative area. So the first image here, it's pretty heavily saturated in cyan. However, when we print the plate, it prints out black. That's because it doesn't matter what color the plate prints, we're going to apply ink to all the black areas, and that's what's actually going to print. So if we look at these color separations at the top, we can see which ones are very heavily saturated. So in order to create this greeny blue color here, we have a lot of cyan and we have a lot of yellow. We don't have a lot of pink or magenta and we don't have a lot of black. So by looking at this, I know that if I have a job, I'm going to purchase a lot more cyan and yellow ink than I am magenta and black ink. The same thing applies for the second example. So an example, I can see right off the bat that it's going to have a lot of yellow in it, and I would guess a lot of magenta because it has orange as well. So the top row here are color separations, and just like I had predicted, it's really heavy in yellow. It's not as heavy as I thought it would be in magenta, and there's basically no cyan or black, just a tiny bit of those colors. So when I go to buy the ink for this job, I would have to buy a lot of yellow, a decent amount of magenta, and very little cyan or black. The last thing that you need to know in regarding to ink coverage is that there are two important factors that must be taken into consideration when calculating ink coverage. First is what percentage of the sheet of paper is going to be covered in ink, and two, how much ink does it take to cover the entire page. So number one, commercial printing is done through the use of half tones. All colors are broken down into cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for printing, or any spot colors if you're using those colors. So if you're going to print, let's talk about screen printing for, for a second. Let's say I'm printing a shirt, and the shirt's blue, and I'm going to screen print a red logo on it. I would use red ink because it's only one color, as opposed to making that red out of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The colors are then applied to paper using various patterns of CMYK halftone dots. These dots are used to calculate the exact percentage of ink coverage used in a job. Graphic arts programs like Adobe InDesign can be used to get the exact numbers. Uh, however, for this class, I will always give you the percentage. So let's, let's talk about this in terms of an actual project. Let's say we're making posters, and those posters are 8.5 by 11, and we're going to hang them up in the hallway. 
if I was to calculate the possible ink coverage for the entire sheet of paper, it would be 8.5 inches times 11 inches, and that would give me 100% ink coverage. However, we're not going to print a solid black or a solid green or a solid whatever on the entire sheet of paper. We might have some type at the top that says yard sale at the bottom. Maybe there's a picture of some stuff for sale and some prices. But the entire sheet is not covered, so I can't just say, okay, well, the sheet's 8.5 by 11. I'm going to cover the entire thing with ink. I have to figure out what percentage of the paper is covered in cyan, what percentage uses yellow ink, what percentage uses magenta ink. That's the same thing as the previous slides here. See how this slide here, we're saying yellow has 99% coverage because it's nearly full, but cyan only has 10% coverage because it's very light. So in step one here, we have to calculate that or we have to figure it out. And for our problems, I will always give them to you. And then secondly, how much ink does it take to cover the page? This costity of ink and the type of substrate can determine how much ink it takes to cover an entire page. This value is reported as a poundage of ink per square inch uh, to cover a square inch of paper. For example, one pound of Sun Chemical, that's a company that makes ink, low tax cyan may cover 10,000 square inches of paper. If you know this information, and that will be given to you by the ink company, um, Knowing this information allows us to figure out how many pounds are needed for the entire job. So for example, if we need to cover 1 million square inches of paper based on the size of whatever we're printing and the ink coverage, we can divide that by 10,000 square inches because every one pound of ink will cover 10,000 square inches and we can figure out that we need to purchase 100 pounds of ink. But don't worry about that for now, we're going to go through that in the next video. For now, all you have to understand is that you need to know these things. You have to know, one, what percentage of the paper is covered in the ink color that you're trying to calculate, and two, what's the ink spread? How, how much paper can be covered with one pound of ink?